Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining. This is your host Nino and I would like to refer to you a recent misadventure which I solved and I'm leaving the solution here as a future note to whoever stumbles across it as well as a note to self because I stumble across it about once per year and I always forget how I solve it. So, I was playing with a piece of strange software which required weird ancient dependencies. I installed them without looking too much. My own fault. And in doing so, I destroyed my sound system. I was no more having sound on Linux. I was having here, of course, this little audio symbol. But if I went to settings and would go down to sound, I would not have an output device headphones with built-in audio. Instead, I would be having simply dummy output. And of course, dummy output was no output at all. I was trying to find help in all sorts of places in the internet and I was thinking, goodness gracious, I am using Ubuntu, one of the most popular distributions. There should be someone who had the same problem. And indeed, there were plenty of people who had the same problem, only these problems didn't really get a solution. So I tried my own luck on the Ubuntu forums. I gave them all sorts of output in the hardware department of what I did, what was the output, what I couldn't find, and so on and so forth. I got no answer. Only in the end, I answered my own question, which was to insert the proper audio drivers. Admittedly afterwards I felt a little bit appalled because if you ask anything for instance in the BSD forums, I have experience here with FreeBSD and NetBSD, in both cases, like mailing list, forums, wherever, you're going to get a very swift, correct, complete and well-reasoned answer with very helpful and competent suggestions. If you look at the Ubuntu forums, you'll get advice of what is the equivalent of the Get It text editor in Xubuntu or how to change your desktop background. But if you wish to go be beyond such child's play, and if you have a real issue, then God help you. That belongs to the really most useless part of the internet to find any help whatsoever on Ubuntu. My opinion. Now, how I figured out things might be going that way is that I did the message and I was looking for some sort of audio. And I did actually find that there was this Intel, or was it sound, but I was looking for both. And I realized that the sound card uh, is recognized. Both the USB sound card was recognized and the internal Intel HDA sound card was recognized. Just they were not activated. And when I was doing CAT PROC A sound modules, I was getting no result. And when I was doing LS mod grab sound, I was getting no results either. In the beginning I did not recognize what was up and I was hoping I could simply reinstall my sound system. To my dismay I noticed that there is no simple way of doing that. There is no such thing like an equivalent to the build essential package. You know in Ubuntu or Debian and some derivatives, if you install the build essential package you're going to get a pretty competent basic installation of development tools. I was hoping something like that might exist for sound as well. Like install this package, it is going to fix your sound as if it's a new installation. Negative. There is no such thing. So what I did was I deinstalled with purge to also destroy any resident files, my sound base, and afterwards I I reinstalled the whole pleasure again, but also GDM3 and Ubuntu Desktop. It is interesting that if you uninstall your 
sound sub subsystem, it is also going to uninstall your desktop package. I mean, brilliant, it's going to cause all sorts of dependency fuss. And God knows what else got lost in the process when I initially uninstalled my sound system. I find that a terrible dependency and a terrible handling of the entire affair. Like, imagine someone not recognizing what's going on, not being to help himself. What? He's now condemned to never have sound on Linux again. Awesome. But doing so did not actually give me back my audio drivers. And so I then finally fi figured out I have to manually mod probe them in. And yeah, these are the commands. This this one on the right for the internal sound card and this on the left for the USB audio. And when I did that, then cut proc A sound modules started to give me the sound card I was using and LS mod grab sound started to give me a lot more. The USB sound card is right now not connected so don't be surprised that it does not appear. And lo and behold I could once again hear and record sound ever before has it never been better. I decided not to automatize this because having the power to not have a sound system appeared appealing to me. There's a certain charm in being able to say this machine doesn't even have a sound system. <laughs> So that's where I ended up. And now I have sound and everything has been handled. And this is a friendly greeting to the desperate souls who are even offering money on the Ubuntu forums for this issue to be fixed for them. God knows I tried to find that complaint but just couldn't find it after I discovered the solution. And who got no replies whatsoever of any helpful nature. But that is what you need to likely do. This whole reinstallation of your sound system may give you back all the demons and programs and whatnot, but is not going to procure your drivers to be ins inserted that you'll have to do manually. Important note to sell for the future. Future Nino, remember to mod probe your sound card drivers. The sound card was thereby fixed but another misadventure awaited me and that was doubled desktop icons. Now it was easy enough to figure out that a doubled set of n desktop items must be due to different programs trying to generate icons on the desktop question which. Yeah, this is where nothing useful could be found. For Everything I was looking for was suggesting like maybe there is a remnant from a previous Xubuntu installation and God knows what. And that was all not the case. Finally, I decided to just look through things manually and that's why I found the culprits. I installed two things, the GNOME extensions and the GNOME tweaks. The GNOME tweaks, yeah, I mean the tweaks, contained thereby in the appearance, oh, yeah, in the startup applications section, a set of programs which will be launched every time you log into your system. One of them is Nemo Desktop. Nemo Desktop generates icons. So having that means that you're getting the one set of icons. And Nemo, and, and in the extensions, the ah, new generation icons, where are they? The desktop icons NG were also generating icons. I can briefly show you what that looked like. Tada! You see? Everything is there, only one set is clickable, like this. Home I can mark, this one I cannot, it's like superimposed. And this is what I was re really greeted with the moment I had reinstalled my desktop environment. That was insanely annoying. And the non-obvious thing here was that the one set you will find under the GNOME tweaks and the other set 
under the extensions. So have a look at both should you be greeted with this doubling icons issue. Or, which was my escape plan should all of this fail, simply ditch GNOME, install XFCE and live a happy life there. <laughs> So that's the end of this adventure. I hope it is useful to you should you ever end up in this situation. Thank you for having joined today and I would be all too happy if you were to join in the future for further adventures. If you're not a subscriber yet, I would be grateful if you were to consider it. Until our next meeting, I wish you a wonderful time. Thanks for joining today and from me, goodbye.